Head collecting. A favorite pastime of animal hunters and serial killers alike, TF2 gives you quite a few ways to round up people's craniums for your own personal gain. Whether it gives you more health, makes your rifle charge faster, gives you more rockets in your clip, which is technically kills and not heads, but it's functionally the same thing, so it counts, there are quite a few weapons that start out weak and get stronger over time. But as you might expect, the benefits of snowballing with these weapons does eventually plateau. After about five kills with any of these weapons, they reach their final form, with any further kills still increasing the number at the bottom of your screen, but not actually giving you any more health or ammo or whatever. But what if they did? So that's the question that I want to answer today. What if stacking weapons stacked forever? Now the four weapons that collect something on kill, those being the Airstrike, Bizarre Bargain, Eyelander, and Vitus Saw, are not in fact the only weapons that can stack. Weapons with meters that give you an effect based on how full they are can also be uncapped, since all we have to do is look at what they do if the meter went over 100%. Weapons with meters that can only be activated when they're full, on the other hand, do not work with this concept, since letting the meter fill infinitely would mean that you could never actually activate them. This means that we can add exciting weapons like, uh, oh, it, it uh, only affects the baby faces blaster. All right then. There are also a few weapons that give you overhealer health on kill, so I'll throw those in too for good measure. Well, anyway, let's see what we got to work with, and for fun, I'll rate how good the weapons would be if these changes were actually implemented for some reason. But first, tanks. This video is sponsored by World of Tanks. World of Tanks is a free multiplayer game that lets you drive a massive tank around the map and destroy fools with giant cannons. There is a simple pleasure in obliterating a war machine in a fiery explosion, but what's not simple is the game itself, and I mean that in the best of ways. You can play as not one, not two, but 600 different tanks. You've got destroyers, artillery, light tanks, heavy tanks, everything in between tanks. The experience you're in in combat lets you customize and upgrade your tanks so you can have it any which way you want. And you can drive these bad boys up, down, and all around every type of terrain imaginable, ranging from wide open deserts to secluded forests. And if you get bored of the splendor of nature, you can also blow each other up in the flaming remains of the city you just leveled. With over 40 maps and 600 tanks, the amount of different battles you can have is practically endless. But don't let the cool factor of this game distract you from the fact that historical accuracy is also a major focus. These aren't just any old tanks you're in. These are authentic models from various militaries throughout history with a high attention to detail, making you actually feel like you're piloting a real tank, uh, with the minor exception of controls, which unlike real tanks actually feels responsive. Downloading World of Tanks is completely free and can be done so using the first link down here, but this link is special because if you use the code TANKMANIA during registration, you get a bunch of free goodies, including a free premium account for seven days, a bucket load of credits, the premium tank Excelsior, and some rental tanks that you can try out for 10 battles each. So yeah, it's a game where you blow each other up with tanks, I can't think of a reason not to play it, really. Also, check out the World of Tanks merch on Amazon, the store link's in the description. Back to weapon uncapping, let's start with the Eyelander, easily the most popular snowballing weapon in the game. Killing someone with any of the Eyelander variants adds one head to your collection, and each head gives you an extra 8% move speed and 15 maximum health. Now, normally this maxes out at five heads, at which point you're running around at 123% move speed with 210 maximum health. But as you probably expected, we can take it so much further. Getting up to seven total kills makes you the fastest class in the game with 139% move speed, which narrowly beats out the scout's base 133%. But what if a scout's using the baby face's blaster and can still outrun you? Well, all you'd need to catch up to him is four more heads, or 11 total, at which point you've hit the game's movement speed cap. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to pretend like that doesn't exist so we can get funnier numbers. If you have a pair of boots equipped, which adds 10% base speed, a 10 kill streak with the Eyelander is what it takes to break the speed cap of 172%. If you went godlike, which is a 20 kill streak, you're now running around at 263% speed, or about 33 miles per hour. For comparison, the real life world record for the fastest running speed ever achieved by a human was 27.8 miles per hour by Usain Bolt. However, Usain Bolt only ran 100 meters at that speed, whereas Demo Man can run any distance he wants without getting tired. I don't know if a cursed sword would count as performance enhancing drugs, but it's still impressive nonetheless. Now, if you're wondering about the health value, specifically with the boots equipped, 10 heads would give you 325 max health, and having 20 heads collected would leave you with 475 health at your disposal. This means the only thing that isn't a backstab capable of killing you in one shot is a fully charged Machina a headshot, which holy god. Taking it to the extremes, 50 heads would give you 925 health and 503% move speed, 100 heads would give you 1,625 health and a 903% move speed, and any values beyond that are kind of boring because it's only additive and not multiplicative, so I'll leave it there. As far as how good this would make the Eyelander, I'd say that it would be pretty game-breaking due to how hard it would be to die once you got past a certain point. Eyelander demos with five heads are already pretty difficult to take down without a sentry or minigun, but eventually you get enough health and speed to reliably tank a sentry and destroy it with your melee, which would be terrifying and would also mean that you basically have no counter unless you get cheesed by a pyro or something. The only drawback is once your movement speed gets above like 300%, you're so fast that it becomes difficult to move around without
without bumping into walls, but considering the circumstances, I'd say that's pretty minor in the grand scheme of things. So I'm going to put the Islander and its variants in the A tier of uncapped weapons. The Bizarre Bargain is kind of boring, actually, because at some point the charge becomes effectively instant, but uncapping the charge boost still helps with the weapon a little bit. The Bizarre Bargain normally caps out at six collected heads, in which the time that it takes to fully charge the weapon becomes a blazing 1.8 seconds compared to the stock rifle's 3.3. But even though the increase in charge time is listed as a flat 25%, the way that it actually affects the numbers is a bit more complicated. Here's a graph I pulled off the TF2 wiki showing the effective charge time with each amount of heads you have collected. As you can see by the curve of the graph, the more heads you get, the more diminishing the return becomes. Hi, post-edit great blue here. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what the frick is happening with these numbers because what I wrote down in my script is not at all correct. I have been looking at this graph for like an hour and I have no idea how the numbers that are listed in the stats, which is a 25% increase per kill, makes sense on this graph like at all. These are not 25% increases. None of them are. None of these are 25% increases. I don't know what the frick is happening. I'm going to put this in the B tier because like it, it, it's still pretty good. It's still a good weapon, but I, I literally can't wrap my head around these numbers. I think there's also like a charge delay, which I think factors into this, but the TF2 wiki doesn't label their axes really, so what the frick? Anyway, sorry for the rant. I'm just getting tired of staring at this, so I, I have to like, I had to undo several hours of work and I'm, I'm just, I'm frustrated. All right, okay. Moving on to a slightly more interesting one, the Conniver's Kunai would become an absolute powerhouse under this set of rules. As it currently stands, the max amount of overheal you can rack up from backstabs is a respectable 210. But if this limit was infinite, uh, well... No, 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 no. That isn't the right, no, F2. I don't think we have a just power. We don't. That was a fake vote. Did you vote yes on it? I mean, that's the Casual as a whole would not survive. There is really no math with this one, just the existential dread of knowing that a single chain stab could put an enemy spy in the four digits worth of HP. This would effectively snowball until the spy had so much health that the only way you could kill him is by backstabbing him, in which case one of your spies could also use the kunai and then steal all of that health back for himself. So if this change was implemented, casual as we know it would be a kunai spy's paradise, with the winning team being whoever spy got the most recent backstab, and because of that, I'm putting the kunai in the S tier. To add to this, the half Zatoichi works in a very very similar way, except in exchange for the ability to instant kill, it has a longer range and doesn't require you to play spy. If you have the boots equipped, killing with this thing always gives you 100 health flat, which is much better if you're finishing off low health enemies, but much worse if you're fighting classes like the heavy. Now, even though a lot of what I just said about the kunai also applies to the half Zatoichi, the relatively limited speed in which you're able to snowball overheal is a big drawback in comparison, so I'm only going to put this one in the A tier. Speaking of things that have a health cap, the De La Coz bar currently only gives you the 50 health bonus once, with further attempts only refreshing the timer. What if the health bonus stacks? and eating it five times in a row gave you 250 extra health instead of the normal 50. The answer is that you can have infinite health is heavy. What did you expect was going to happen? The De La Coz bar is on a 10 second cooldown, meaning that you can gain 50 health by eating it every 10 seconds or 5 health per second on average. After a full minute of eating chocolate, you'll be walking away with double your normal max health at 600 total. For every minute of eating chocolate after that, your max health will further increase by 300, meaning that in order to break the forbidden 1000 HP threshold, you'll need to spend about 2 minutes and 20 seconds eating food. But this is only the case if you're outside of spawn. Touching a resupply locker instantly recharges your food meter without negating the bonus, meaning that the fastest speed you can gain health at is 50 HP for each 4.3 second animation, or just under 700 health per minute of eating. This is actually pretty dang good, since you can more than double your max health for a mere 30 seconds in spawn. However, as overpowered as it would be for heavies to run around with tens of thousands of health, I'm only going to put this in A tier for two reasons. Number one, you wouldn't be able to contribute to your team during the time you're eating your chocolate. Two minutes of farming health means nothing if your team is getting steamrolled during that amount of time. Second, you can still die to backstabs very easily, meaning that the five minutes you spent getting up to 10,000 health in spawn can be instantly deleted if you walk out of spawn and immediately get shanked. This would still be insanely game-breaking if used properly, but unlike the other two health-increasing items, the process of getting the health can actually be a pretty big sacrifice to your team. The airstrike is also worth talking about even if it isn't the most interesting. The stat we'd be uncapping here is the extra rocket that's added to your clip on kill, which normally stops accumulating once you hit 8, but in this case would keep increasing forever. If we're being honest, this would not affect the airstrike much. This weapon has its fair share of problems, but the fact that you eventually stop getting the clip size increase is not exactly exactly one of them. Although it'd be funny if you were able to quickly fire off 20 rockets without reloading, it doesn't change the fact that most classes die in less than 5. So yeah, I'm gonna be putting this one in the C tier because basically nothing would end up changing. While we're at it, let's cover the Vitasol because it's equally as straightforward. Just in case you forgot that there are other medic melees that aren't the Ubersol, the Vitasol allows you to collect organs on hit with each collected organ, causing you to retain an extra 15% Uber charge whenever you respawn. Normally this caps at 60% with 4 organs, but without the cap you'd be able to go all the way up to 7 organs to retain a full Uber charge meter on the 
the respawn. Now this sounds really good in theory, and this actually might make the weapon slightly more worth using than it already is, but the reality is that hitting people and getting immediate uber is always better than saving a crewed uber through lives. We could make the Vitasaw cap at a thousand percent uber on respawn, but that fact alone would still make the uber saw a better choice. Yes, the uber saw is just that good. So I'm also going to be putting the Vita saw on the C tier, because like the airstrike, nothing of note would really end up happening. And finally, let's discuss the baby faces blaster, because the results are so stupid that it's hilarious. We are of course going to assume that the boost never caps, and that by continuing to deal damage, you can get the meter to whatever percent above 100 that you want. Each point of damage dealt gives exactly 1% boost in return, no hassle there, and each point of boost you have increases your movement speed by about 0.48%. At the normal full meter charge, you run at 173% speed, which is 520 hammer units per second, or about 22 miles per hour. To break the land speed sprinting record mentioned earlier in the video, you need to get your boost meter up to about 340%, which really only means killing a heavy and dealing some chip damage. The cheetah, the fastest land mammal on Earth, can achieve a sprinting speed of about 70 miles per hour, which can be matched by a scout with a boost meter that is 1,139% full. The speed of sound is about 767 miles per hour, meaning that obtaining 12,483% boost should make the scout create a sonic boom every time he moves. And finally, in order for scout to move at the speed of light, he would need to gain 108,984,375% boost. If you were somehow able to deal that amount of damage in a single life, you would move so fast that the friction of your movement through the air would be hot enough to vaporize most of, if not all of the entire Earth as well as its atmosphere. Because of that, I'm going to place the Baby Faces Blaster in the B tier, because while that does sound pretty powerful, I'd imagine that moving around at that speed would be a pain. Oh, also, there are a few weapons that can store crits that all cap at 30. I'm putting all of them in D tier because increasing this number would do a big fat nothing. Anyway, that's my take on what weapons would look like if they didn't have caps on their accumulating stats. I left out quite a few weapons on purpose because uncapping them wouldn't really change anything about the weapon, but if you would like to see them anyway, let me know and I'll consider making a follow-up video. Also, thanks again to World of Tanks for sponsoring the video. It's a good game and it helps me keep the lights on, so it's a win-win. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like. If you hated this video, make sure to give me a 40-page physics write-up on why I'm wrong, and most importantly, have a good one.